actually, I'm sorry, the first item is a, an athletic preventive injury screening program. There's no cost to that, so there was no bidding or uh, proposals necessary. The second item listed um, is a contract with the Board of Governors, California Community College Chancellor's Office. That is a grant agreement for assessment remediation and retention for the associate degree nursing program. So that's a grant that we've received for $131,100. Um, again, uh, proposals and competitive bidding is not required for that item. The next item with Keenan and Associates, this is for our workers' compensation runoff claims for $11,500. Um, this is something that we had, um, similar to what we explained at the last meeting, Keenan and Associates is our third-party administrator for our workers' compensation claims. And uh, we do have uh, runoff claims, or those claims that are old and predate over 10 years ago, so we still have to uh, continue to monitor and maintain those claims, and so that is uh, paying our third-party administrator the fees necessary for that claim. The next one was Stanton Chase International for $46,000. Uh, this is for recruitment services for director-level positions in our college advancement and economic development area, as well as within human resources. The recruiter was chosen based upon their experience and lowest cost from a field of five firms who were interviewed. The next item, Delinka Group LLC for $9,000. This, um, was, we received two proposals for these services. Uh, Delinka Group will be providing our dissemination services related to our bond compliance. The next item, Dawson and Dawson Staffing Incorporated for $28,165. Again, this is recruitment services for manager level positions in community advancement and economic development. This recruiter was chosen based upon their experience and lowest cost from a field of five firms who were interviewed. And lastly, the contract with Helga Wild for $87,200. Uh, this is a contract, it's the, uh, the second piece of our, our business process analysis that we discussed in length at the board meeting at our last board meeting, um, Helga will be providing design thinking services and training for us, and this is all part of trying to improve the student experience, looking at how we, how we currently serve our students, if there's things that we can do to better serve our students, to make their experience more streamlined and easier for them to understand. So this is the, the second piece of that whole process that we're undergoing. Okay, um, and why are we outsourcing um, the recruitment services? Uh, why can't this be done in-house? Is it that highly specialized that we need to outsource? Uh, I'd be happy to answer that. The answer to the question is yes. Uh, second, we're not outsourcing recruitment services. Um, these firms are supplementing our recruitment services. The uh, Human Resources Department is uh, and has been overwhelmed by the number of recruitments uh, that have been ongoing. And these uh, particular positions are more specialized. Uh, they're part of the economic development area, in particular some of the business development um, positions which require some specialized knowledge of uh, where to recruit and so they're supporting our human resources staff. They're, they're not outsourcing them. Okay, great. And will we, does this include hiring of the director of financial aid as well? No, it does not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's all I have for that item, President Otto. Okay, then I would entertain a motion to approve item 3.8. So moved. moved by Trustee. <laughs> Baxter, seconded by Trustee Archuleta. Further discussion? Madam Secretary, will you call the... Uh, uh, President Otto, I do have a for, uh, further a follow-up question, if that's okay. Um, and why is it that we're not um, uh, covering a recruitment of a finance director for financial, um, fi financial aid? Um, I've heard that that's been a, um, an issue um, and, and staff is overburdened, but 
Um, I'm certainly not um, trying to tell you how to uh, manage um, your staff, Mr. Oakley, but I'd like to understand why that's not part of this recruitment process. Because this recruitment process is not related to financial aid, it's related to uh, economic development. And at this point, we don't feel like we need specialized services for that area. Recruitment and financial aid is something that human resources is very accustomed to doing. And will they be doing that? The recruitment uh, yes. for, and by when? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? And let's vote on 3.8. Madam Secretary. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. Uh, second is, or next is, um, item 3.9, contract awards. Were there questions? Points, anyone? No, uh, it was, I believe I pulled 3.10, uh, President Otto, not 3.9. Okay, so I, I had said 3.9, I think, but we didn't, I was wrong, okay. 3.10, purchase order ratification. Um, this has to do with uh, purchase orders and change orders uh, issuances for the period of August 3, 2015 through August 14, 2015. Um, questions? Yes, um, thank you, President Otto. Um, I just, uh, I've noticed um, we have reoccurring charges and it's hard to um, tell what's the cumulative values. For example, um, catering, custodial service, I see it on, each time. Um, are these amounts that are reflected here the cumulative amount to date or is it just for that period of the month? And if it's for the month, is it possible to see, um, to get another uh, column to see what's spent to date? So the, the purchase order listing that you have are the purchase orders that were issued for the time period August 3rd through August 14th. Many of these purchase orders are to get the start of the fiscal year going and are open purchase orders. And so the departments will issue open purchase orders for custodial supplies, for catering services, um, and, and other things so that the purchase order exists and they can go out and get the, the supplies and items needed when they are needed. It just seems to be with the same people over and over and over again. And um, was there any opportunity for other people to compete? Like, for example, the I think it was the David McDonald or Joseph David McDonald, maybe I'm butchering the name, um, David Joel McDonald, none of the above. Um, is the, I just see that name popping up each time, and I don't see any other name for catering. Um, so what are our processes or... Um, uh, what are some of the steps we're taking to get, provide opportunity for other um, firms or vendors to um, have a bite of the apple? David Joel McDonald is the owner of SMB Foods who runs our food service on campus. Part of the contract with them is that they get the first right of refusal for any catering service above $250 on campus. So uh, when we went out with SMB Foods, we did go through a process that the auxiliary did. This is ran by the auxiliary, not the district, but the auxiliary did follow a process and it is part of the contract with SMB Foods that catering services on campus, he gets the first right of refusal. Okay, so these these line items do have per, uh, contracts attached to them. It's, uh, it's not necessarily that they're um, just one purchase or one-offs one or um, recurring separate purchase orders. There's there, they have associated contracts, correct? These particular items, uh, anytime that there's catering by any department, they go through S&B Foods. So we have the master contract with S&B Foods. So each department can issue a purchase order based on their budget, uh, and they just have to go through S&B Foods. So um, there is no other purchasing requirement since okay, they already so are going through the master contract. Okay, so it would just be um, helpful so um, we could see if there are uh, contracts. That way um, we'll not, uh, there will be no need to ask questions. If there is a contract, then there is no need um, for me personally to ask any further questions. 
Would that be possible to see which ones in the next well, ones or? Trustee Zia, the purchase order is a contract. So by the fact that we're issuing a purchase order, that is a form of a contract with the vendor to provide the items that we've issued the purchase order for. Yeah, I, I agree with you, um, Vice President Gable, and yet it's hard to tell how much the cumulative amount has been to date because it's piecemeal each month, and that's what I'm trying to get at. So if we had an amount, a column where we could see what's the cumulative amount for each purchase, it would be nice, particularly for someone like me, to get the bigger picture. That's all. I mean, what I would suggest is if you've got questions like that, um, that concern the way that we're doing the accounting or if you need additional information, if you can offline ask those questions and if you're unsatisfied with the answers you get, um, then, uh, then we, you know, we can take up the issue of whether we want to change the way we do our accounting. Well, I certainly um, i am not suggesting uh, we make any unnecessary changes. The information may already be existent but, you know, and I did per, uh, send in my questions ahead of time, and I've, ha I've asked pri previously, so it's just a matter of... Actually, these ministry. questions came to us about 2 o'clock today, where I think everybody was at the funeral service. Okay, well, regardless, it came in before, but uh, my point before is... What? Um, came in before what? Before the meeting, <laughs> and I've, I've asked previously, but um, nevertheless, uh, it would just be nice for me in order to do my oversight capacity and fulfill my fiduciary duty to the public to have a big, bigger picture of the total expenditures for each line item. That's, that's all I'm saying. Um, it's, um, it would be uh, valuable. Uh, otherwise, it's hard to tell what's the total amount spent um, on each line item. If I can also suggest, all these line items are part of the budget. And every quarter we receive a budget um, update. Um, these line items all represent uh, contracts and purchases that are drawn off that expenditure budget. So the full detail is always disclosed in the amount that we spend on a, on, uh, when we report on a quarterly basis. So um, the total amount really reflects what we approve in the, um, the budget that we're adopting today. So um, yes, and I, the I total amounts that. of the purchases yeah. for the entire year. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't. I, um, we can discuss this um, further, at, at, but at a later time. But really, this is not just for the benefit of the trustees to know. The public has the right to know this information, and I'd simply like to have it. Uh, I'm suggesting we put it there as just an additive value or cumulative value to date so that at, out of the spirit of transparency and the public's right to know, it's codified, that's all. Um, and I'm certainly not criticizing our process. I'm, I think we have a great process. That's all I have for that item. Well, with all due respect, Trustee Zia, you're suggesting that this is not a transparent process. And I'm certainly me, not suggesting let me that. Be clear. <laughs> let me be clear. The total amount for the entire year purchase order is on this document. Uh, so it hasn't all been spent, but this is the amount of the purchase order that's open for the year. So just to be clear, that is the total amount that should be spent throughout the entire year. Okay, thank you, Superintendent Oakley. The, um, I do take exception with the way things are reported in the budget. It's one line item. It's hard to tell um, what the breakdown, what the breakdown of these numbers are. And I'm simply uh, asking that we increase our um, very transparent process that we already have that our staff has worked very diligently and hard um, at. It's just, uh, we can always do better and um, that's all. And I guess what I was suggesting is that these are the kinds of things that can be worked out offline and your questions can be answered. And if they're not answered to your satisfaction, then we can bring them forward, especially if they involve policy changes of some, some, of some kind. But I don't want to create the impression that um, the process is not transparent, that there are thing, additional things that we should be doing um, unless we have a chance to vet these things. And I mean, I do think that it's important, and I think we've suggested and I think indeed the communications committee will suggest that there be 
not a deadline, but a time when questions with regard to agenda items get presented so we have an opportunity to respond to things uh, in a timely way. And, uh, and that means we're taking a lot, we're taking a lot of st staff time to do that, and that's one of the things that staff does. But uh, it was impossible today. I mean, absolutely impossible to get any kind of responses at all because nobody was here except you, I think. And so uh, I think that what we, what we need to do is to, to take this offline, not as a way of hiding anything or making it less transparent, but by making it an efficient process. Everybody gets to ask whatever questions they want to ask uh, in a timely way, uh, but in a way where we can all meaningfully participate. Sure, Fair. absolutely. I've always agreed on that concept. I just, it just seems to be every time I ask offline that uh, our superintendent has an ax to grind with me and I, I take exception to that. That's, and I will ask publicly to make sure the people understand what we're looking at in order to fulfill our duties as trustees. I, as board president, if you think the superintendent president has an ax to grind against you, I would ask you to bring those concerns to me directly and we can talk about those. I will certainly do that. Great, thanks. Uh, did we vote on 3.10? Uh, no, we have not. <coughs> and we, but we have a motion before us? Yeah, I think we yes. have. Madam uh, Secretary, can you please read the roll? Irma Archuleta? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Aye. 3.11, contract amendments. Um, I think there was a concern or a, a question at least about um, uh, CN 99709.9. This is with Cal State Long Beach Research Foundation. We're asking for an amendment to increase the contract amount by $54,936 for a total contract amount not to exceed $203,936. I think, Trustee Zia, you had a question about whether um, the, we were a sub-recipient, or Cal State Long Beach was a sub-recipient, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that fair? Um, it, I just can't tell from the way it's articulated in the description if who is the recipient, or, and then also, or if we're um, responsible to pay this amount. Um, it's just hard to tell. Um, it's a little bit um, cryptic, the way it's... Um, uh, Vice President uh, Gable, it wasn't for me, but go ahead. Yes, so uh, California State University Long Beach, their research foundation is a sub-recipient of ours. Uh, Long Beach City College um, has the TACT grant. We are contracting with Cal State University Long Beach to provide subject matter experts um, and additional program development in support of the TACT supply chain management grant. So we, we already had a contract with them. We are requesting that we amend that contract by $54,936, bringing the total contract to $203,936. Further questions? Yeah, I do. So you're saying they're going to pay us uh, $203,000? No, we are going to pay them. Okay. We have the grant. Okay. We are contracting with them to provide services in relation to that grant and to help us meet the goals and objectives of the grant. Okay, thank you. And, and what is a supply chain management? Yes, um, Trustee Zia, supply chain management has to do with um, our international trade program. Um, our advanced transportation program and everything that is associated with that. So it is um, uh, tracking goods from point of uh, origin to point of destination. It's a training program. It's an entry level training program for people in the community so they can get introduced to the whole issue of supply chain logistics. Thank you. Okay, I would entertain a motion with regard to uh, Agenda item 3.11, contract amendments, which concerns its Cal State University Research Foundation grant. So moved. Second. It's moved by Trustee Zia. Is that right? I, I seconded. Uh, Trustee Archuleta made the motion. Trustee Archuleta made the motion. Trustee Zia seconded it. Any further discussion? If not, Madam Secretary, please call the 
Uh, roll if you're ready. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. 3.12, grant revenue agreements. This concerns, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, this is a contract C CN 93173.8 with the California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development to provide funding effective July 1, 2015 through June 30th, 2016 in the amount of $503,000. Um, this grant, there's a, a grant number, provides funding for business consulting focusing on access to capital for Los Angeles Small Business Development Center network centers. Excuse me. A motion. Are you on 312? Yes. We didn't pull 312, did we? Well, I no. did. We did not pull it wasn't pulled. It was, I thought it was on my list. We, we do need to go back to 310, though, because... A vote. There was no vote recorded. Okay. Okay, we so went straight into discussion uh, after you opened the item, and then we took roll, but there was not a motion. So I'll entertain a motion on 310. So moved. So Second. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking. I made the motion, uh, President Otto. Okay. Second. You got that. From Archuleta? That's so what I need to hear. Zia made the motion, Archuleta made the second. Um, any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. And Sunny Zia. Aye. Now, did we pull 313? 314. No, 13? 14. Okay. Academic personnel. Um, uh, I think this was pulled by Trustee Zia. Uh, so, yes, I, I, I just wanted to congratulate um, Casey Crook um, and uh, in becoming the interim de department head of kinesiology. And that's all I had. It's okay. well deserved. Any other comments? Entertain a motion to approve 3.14. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Zia, second by Trustee Baxter. Please call the roll. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. Now, what's the next one that we have pulled? That's the end of that. Okay. So we've now approved all of the pulled items, I believe, and we're ready to roll on to the, the, the consent agenda has now been approved. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So um, academic affairs, 4.1. Approval of designated representatives to serve as the official Long Beach Community College District representative to the Long Beach Adult Education Consortium. So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, who's being, um, so this is for Vice President Terry Long. Yes. Right? I just wanted to say it's a very um, uh, well-deserved appointment, and I'm sure Terry's going to do a great job and more work. To represent us. <laughs> uh, without any further comments, uh, please call the roll. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. And we move on to item 5.1, the 2014-15 CCFS 311 Annual Financial and Budget Report. Um, including the 2015-16 appropriations limits. Do you want a motion first? Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, moved by Trustee Kellogg, seconded by Trustee Archuleta. Discussion? No discussion. Please call the roll. Four. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. Agenda item 5.2, the 2015-16 Adopted Budget and Education Protection Account Expenditure Plan. They entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved by Trustee Archuleta. Second. Second, Second by Trustee Kellogg. Discussion? Uh, should we have Baxter? Should we right. have the... Ba yeah. Baxter, sorry. Do I? You guys are going to have to develop different voices. I sound just like... 
Um, is there a pre presentation, or should we wait until after the presentation for the discussion? We do have a presentation. Good. Uh, so you have before you the adopted budget for 2015-16. Um, as you can see from the budget and from the description uh, and the superintendent president's message, there were several changes made um, in uh, the bills that transpired after the tentative budget was put to bed. Many of those changes are reflected in the adopted budget. Um, and so with that, I will ask um, uh, Vice President Gable to go through the budget, um, to the final adopted budget. Um, uh, just as an aside, um, uh, there is much anticipation that, um, that after this budget, uh, things will begin to tighten up in Sacramento. We're, we're hoping that there's at least one more good year, but, um, but we can expect to see um, several of the line items that increased this year over last uh, uh, peaking this year and possibly heading back down over the next few years, but we're, we'll remain hopeful. So with that, I'll turn it over to Vice President Gable. Thank you, President Oakley. So quickly tonight, I, I will cover the state budget overview. This is the budget that was signed by the governor in July, um, as well as the board goals, the institutional priorities that were developed by the college, the planning assumption highlights that the Budget Advisory Committee uh, approved and that went into the budget, going over our FTS history, the projections, a list of all of our district funds, and then we'll go into great detail with the Unrestricted Journal Fund. We'll look at a two-year budget projection and then discuss some future budget challenges. So moving into the state budget overview uh, that was approved by the governor, there was 156.5 million, or about 3% in growth funding. With this growth funding, there was a new growth formula that was put into place by the Board of Governors that takes into consideration adults without a college degree, unemployed adults, and then households below the poverty line within the district's boundaries, and then looking at the unmet unmet need of the district from the prior year to come up with a growth rate. So what you see there in the sub-bullet, the growth rate provided by the Chancellor's Office for Long Beach City College is 1.7%. In order to receive the $1.7 million, we need to generate an additional 347 FTES from where we were at the end of 2014-15 or for a total of 20,754 FTES. The next line item, there was a 1.02%. Can I ask you a quick question about that or, or yes, go make ahead. an observation? You know, I, I think it's important to, to thoroughly understand how this new formula affects us and how this new formula affects the state. I mean, for example, I know that Chafee Mm -hmm. uh, College of the Desert, Mount San Jacinto, have growth rates in almost double digits. And it's my understanding that with those numbers, if they're able to achieve those, and, and the reason for that is not because these are affluent areas and quick, or, or, or non-affluent areas, but they're just areas where they anticipate a lot of growth for a whole bunch of different reasons. But then it gets built into the formula if they're able to achieve this. And, it's at a number that's several times what it is that we're allowed to do. Uh, I mean, it's, that, you know, if we have a 1.7 rate, um, I'm just uh, uh, I'm trying to project this out into the future, and uh, uh, where does it leave us? Well, the, the formula was trying to match access that um, is perceived within a district's boundaries and the need that that district has shown. And so the need is basically if a district has had unfunded FTES in the past year, then there's a higher unmet need for that district. Um, and so about 50.1% of the formula goes to those districts that had unfunded FTES in the previous year. And then the other 49.9% of the formula is based upon the access. And the access, as I stated, are the three factors um, within the district boundaries of the number of adults without a college attainment, the number of unemployed adults, and the households that are below the poverty line. 
Um, so, you know, as you mentioned, you know, Mount San Jacinto, they've had a lot of growth, and so they've had unfunded FTES in the previous years, and that's why their their growth rates got a little bit higher. Um, you know, we have not had any unfunded FTES, and so our growth rate has been uh, constrained a little bit down to the 1.7%. You know, I, I will say the 1.7% is a stretch for us. Um, even if the state had given us a, you know, 3 or a 5% growth rate, I don't think we would have gotten there. Um, I think we will be lucky to get to the 1.7% um, at the way things are going right now. We're doing a lot. Um, to try to improve the number of students that we currently have. But this is going to be a stretch, and it's going to be um, probably you will know in June whether or not we're going to get to this 20,754 FTES.